Dear friends, in this video, we are going to see the difference between the process capability indices CP and CPK. They are generally called the short term process capability. We'll see what exactly the CP and CPK means and the difference between the two. I'm sharing my screen. Right. So you are seeing my slide now, right? It talks about CP as well as CPK. When you look at CP, it is basically the measure of process consistency, right? And the mathematical formula for CP is USL minus LSL divided by UCL minus LCL. What is this numerator saying USL minus LSL? This is the tolerance given by your customer, or I would say the specification width. And the denominator, UCL minus LCL. What is UCL and LCL? The control limits. These are nothing but the process extremities. So the width between the process extremities is called the process width or otherwise called the process tolerance. So what are we doing? We are actually comparing the process width in relation to the specification width. The process tolerance compared to the specification tolerance or the customer tolerance. So when so the CP actually uh, is a measure of the consistency, measure of the consistency. So higher CP value means higher consistency. Lower CP value means lower consistency. What is this consistency means? Your ability, your process ability to produce part continuously closer to the average. Your ability of your process to produce parts continuously closer to the average. Right. And that is what CP actually tells it. It doesn't actually you know, uh, confirms that your process is capable. When I say capable, it means all the parts produced by your process should necessarily inside the specification limits. Right. Your CP actually doesn't measures that aspect, whereas it measures only the ability of your process to produce parts continuously around the average. So CP equal to one means all the parts produced are closer to the average and provided the sigma is very low, provided the sigma is very low. And there is also an industry rule. When can we consider a process as consistent depending on a CP value? I will, I will give you that value. And now when uh, CP is more than one, what it means? When CP is more than one, it means the process is consistent and may or may not be capable, right? Suppose let's say CP is more than one. Let's say it's about 1.8 or something. You can definitely conclude your process is consistent because all that you are producing are going to be around the average. But even with the higher CP value of let's say 1.8, your process can still be incapable, right? So you really cannot conclude that your process is capable depending on the value of the CP, right? So CP more than one means your process is consistent, but it may or may not be capable, but a higher value of CP can, can, be, can, can be used to conclude that your process has got a you know, lot of potential to become you know, highly capable. That is what it means. But we, if you really wanted to conclude only looking at the CP, you can only conclude that your process is consistent. And what will be the decision when CP is less than one? When CP is less than one, it means your process is definitely inconsistent. If it is inconsistent and it cannot be capable also, that means your control limits are going to exceed the specification limits. And so, you, and so your process cannot be capable and prior to that your process is definitely inconsistent and so the industry standard or the thumb rule for uh, to say a process is consistent is when cp is more than 1.33 you can safely conclude your process is consistent and for if your process is uh, is a non critical process suppose if the process you are working on is a critical process then your CP should be at least 1.67 to conclude it is you know, a consistent process. So once again, I underline the statement that CP talks only about the consistency of the process and not about the capability. Higher CP might include the potential 
no uh, your process has got to become capable but but looking at the cp value alone you can only comment about the consistency of the process fine so we are done with the uh, cp value and then let us move on to cpk what is this cpk cpk is a measure of process capability there is a mathematical formula for our for your cpk which reads like the cpk is equal to minimum of usl minus x bar divided by 3 sigma or no x bar minus lsl divided by 3 sigma if you carefully read the formula you will be able to understand cp actually you no know, measures the position of the process average with respect to one of the specification limit right cpk actually measures the position of the process average that is your x bar with respect to the nearest specification limit right it could be on the right or it could be on the left so so when you are uh, position of the process average is really you no know, far away from the specification limit that means the chance that your process can be can be capable is really high right and that is that is what it means so cpk is equal to 1 means cpk is equal to 1 actually means one of the control limit in your process is going to overlap with the specification limit that is what the cpk no becoming one actually means if the control limit can only touch the specification limit that means it will still be no accepted by the customer it is still no only falling on the specification limit not crossing so your process can definitely be considered capable when cpk is equal to 1 however there is a industry standard because on a long term these no just capable situations are are not appreciated so always cpk needs to be more than 1.33 for non critical processes and the same should be more than 1.67 for critical processes and now when cpk more than 1 means your process is capable and you can also safely conclude your process is also consistent because always your cp will be more than cpk so when cpk is more than 1 you can understand your cp is also more than 1 so it is safer to conclude your process is not only capable it is also consistent right however you can think of improvising it further in terms of consistency as well as in terms of the capability right but moment you see cpk more than 1 you can safely conclude your process is capable as well as consistent but similarly when cpk is less than 1 it means your process is definitely not capable when cpk is less than 1 your process is definitely not capable because your uh, control limit is going to cross the specification limit and some failures are going to happen but at the same time a lower cpk value no with the lower cpk value you will not be really able to comment about the consistency because even with a lower cpk value your cp may be higher so your process may or may not be consistent so that is why this you know these conditions are uh, need to be looked at to comment about the consistency as well as the capability of the process it is like this for a process to be consistent as well as capable both your cp and cpk need to be more than 1.33 for non critical processes and both need to be more than 1.67 for critical processes i think uh, the uh, this particular session was helpful to you in reading the you know cp cpk analysis report and looking at the value of cp and cpk one can really comment and conclude about the consistency as well as the capability of the process so i i will uh, see you soon in my next video where we will discuss in detail about the same module cp cpk thank you for uh, watching please do subscribe to my uh, channel if you would like to uh, know watch lessons on the six sigma tools and techniques thank you